Good morning, students. Welcome back to the history class. Now, I have finished the chapter one, which is Harappa. And um, uh, the apart from Harappa, you find that the next three chapters, which are there in the book, has the same time period. It is from 600 BCE to 600 CE. So we will trace the rise of the Mahajanpads to the Mauryas, and we will see the society, the religion of the time, because there were a lot of, lot of developments during this time. And we will see it by way of chapters. So the second chapter of, um, of book one, it deals with the political background of the um, Mahajanpats. It, it deals the entire political scenario right from the rise of Mahajanpats to the modern empire and a little bit, very, very little bit about the Gupta period. The third chapter is deals with the society. So the basis is uh, Mahabharat and uh, through Mahabharat, through analyzing the Mahabharat text, uh, the historians have tried to understand the society of the time. The fourth chapter is religion. So we see the rise of Buddhism and Jainism. We trace uh, the reasons for the rise of uh, these two religions and what impact it had on Indian society and religion. So these, these three chapters are interconnected. We, we start with the political. Now I told you that, um, that uh, the Harappan civilization declined. Now after the decline of the Harappan civilization, which is around 1800 BC, you find that the next phase is that of the Aryans. Now to make you people understand, I have put up this map and Corner left, you see, Indo-Aryan, 1700 to 1500. So around 1700 BCE, the Indo-Aryans uh, uh, came to India via this uh, route, which is, which is shown with the arrow mark, but, and they came in hordes. So you find that the, we find that the Rig Vedic tribes are established in the Middle Gangetic region. So the Rig Vedic period is from 1700, actually 1500 to 1100 BC. 1700 to 1500 BC, now these tribes are constantly on the move. And in the Rig Vedic period, uh, I will, I will, although the, uh, the actual question on Rig Vedic and later Vedic does not come, but to understand the rise of the Mahajanpats, it is very, very important to understand this interim period that what happened after the decline of the Harappan civilization. So you make note of this map and the second map is of later Vedic period, 1100 to 500 BCE. So this is the time period when you know, the Mahajanpats came and uh, the, you see Kuru, Panchal, Kosala, Videha. And you can see on the right hand side, Magad in uh, the present day Bihar. And after this, you find that these, because this is the time period when the society had become settled, the people had uh, specified boundaries and you find that the people are settling down. Now let us see the differences between Rig Vedic or early Vedic period and later Vedic period. Now I will start with economy because it was on economy the rest of the things were based on. I will explain how. Now if you see the Rig Vedic period, the, uh, the various tribes, the various tribes which, uh, which were there, they were semi-nomadic, which means that they were not settled at one place. They were moving from one place to the other they dabbled in shifting agriculture, so which means that they were doing agriculture, but because they were not staying at one place, they were probably doing the slash and burn technology. The third thing is that their main wealth was cattle wealth, because they are constantly on the move. So they could not carry land or any other commodity. And it was a basic society where there were no weights, there, were, there was no currency, there was nothing. So land was not a commodity. And this is what happened. Maybe, maybe the decline of the Harappan civilization coincided with the coming of the Aryans. And because the Aryans were, were horse riding people, uh, and we find that Harappans did not, uh, did not uh, domesticate uh, horses. There is no evidence of horse bones 
having been found in the entire Harappan civilization. So probably the the decline and the and the movement of the people from the Harappan cities to the Middle Gangetic period coincided with the Aryans, which came to India around that period. And um, probably because they were horse riders, they were able to rule over over the um, over the indigenous people. So you find that the Rig Ved, which was composed at that that time talks about Dasas and Dasyus. So maybe the Dasas and the Dasyus were the original inhabitants of, the, of India. So you find that economy, as far as economy is concerned, it has gone backward. The settled agriculture, the, um, uh, advanced uh, communities of the Harappan civilization is replaced by the semi-nomadic communities. Now, later Vedic period, if you see, the economy now has changed. This is also the period which is known as the second urbanization because it was after the decline of the Harappan civilization, now the people started settling down. And now agriculture is now the main occupation of the people. So now the land becomes a commodity. And because they are, they are living in a settled uh, place, there are boundaries and you find that uh, the, the boundaries are being protected by the people. Let us see what was the political life. So Rig Vedic polity is nothing but the political life. Now the king, he was known as the Rajan. His position was not hereditary. He was appointed on his ability to fight wars. So which means that, the, that anyone Anyone who had, um, who had uh, ability and who was brave and who was strong was, was appointed as the Rajan. And who appointed them? Sabha and Samati. So the Sabha constituted the, uh, the uh, you know, something like uh, the Panchayat system where the Panchayat is of the, uh, of the older members of the society, the important members of the society. So the Sabha probably at that time also consisted of older and uh, more, um, more maybe sensible or important members of the tribe. And Samiti, the entire community, which means the entire members of the tribe sat together. So these were two important assemblies. And these two assemblies gave an important uh, direction to the king. So the king could not, his position was not that of um, a monarchical ruler. He had to take the advice of the Sabha and Samiti. And his most important function was to keep the tribe safe and fight wars because, because there were various tribes which, were, which came up at that time. It is explained by the hordes of Aryans which came to India. Maybe they came in hordes and they, you know, established their power over one particular tribe. Another came, another. So you, this explains the various tribes which came up. The spoils of war at this time were equally distributed. So at this time, the king did not have any, any special, any specific um, um, powerful position. Let's come to later Vedic period. Now remember that later Vedic period is also the time when there are settled communi com uh, communities. The, uh, the community is now leading a settled life. Now this is the time period when because the king does not have to go, is the, the tribe is not on the move. So the king does not have to go outside the, uh, the, the designated area to fight wars. He had to fight the wars only when a tribe uh, clashed with with a particular tribe. Only then it happened, and it probably happened due to the fact that now the settled communities were increasing in size. How they were increasing population, so they are increasing the area, and the resources um, the, the resources were less. So you find that it is because of the resources that uh, these that uh, the tribes are the tribes are um, fighting with each other. So you find that the Sabha and Samiti are still there, but they have lost their importance. Now they are not, uh, they are not um, guiding the king so much. The king's position now has strengthened. Now the king has become supreme. And now the king, I told you, is not always going out to fight. 
So now the tribute was now given in return for protection. So you find that some sort of uh, tribute um, was, was given by the people to the king in order to protect themselves from invading tribes. So the settled life, the settled life which began had to be protected from other tribes because now they are living in a designated area. Let's come to Rig Vedic society. Now, because they are constantly on the move, and I told you that the entire spoils of war were, were actually equally distributed among all members of the society. So we find that probably it was largely egalitarian. You find that they were equal members. Samiti had all the members of the tribe, which ensured that each person had uh, had a say in the in the workings of uh, workings of the government. Let us come to the Brahmins. Now the Brahmins were the fourfold divisions had come to power. I mean they had they it is the Rig Veda mentions the fourfold uh, division, but at this time the divisions were not strict. The Brahmins of course placed themselves at the top. They told that uh, you know they were uh, that they were the supreme. And all members of the tribe probably sat together and decided the decisions, which shows that uh, these divisions had not become very, very strict. Now let's come to later Vedic society. Now by virtue of it being settled life, you find that um, the agriculture became uh, a dominant thing. Now to do agriculture, to, um, to designate, to have a certain class of people working under the top two, you find that the fourfold division of society came, to, came into effect. So you find the Brahmins, they were the priestly class. Their job was to chant the mantras. Their job was to uh, teach the Kshatriyas the art of warfare and the Vedas. So the, the three later Vedas are believed to have been written at this time uh, and not only that even the even the Upanishads the uh, Aranyakas all these were written at this time so you find uh, that uh, the Brahmins were at the top the Kshatriyas were supposed their job was to rule but when we see the third when we see the second chapter where we see, um, where we go on to see who were the rulers at this time, you will find that not always Kshatriyas were the rulers. But according to the Brahmanical religion, I will call this Brahmanical religion, because at this time the Brahmins were supreme and it was whatever they said was the religion. Hinduism as a religion evolved over a time. And uh, I would prefer to call it not as a religion, but a way of life. So it has evolved, taking into consideration a lot of things. So the Kshatriya's job was, according to the Vedas, to rule. But as we proceed, we will find that it was not always the case. The Vesh were the working class. Now these were, the, these were petty farmers, uh, big farmers, um, traders. You find that the trade is starting. Petty traders moving from within the communities because every village was not self-sufficient and you find that they had to trade for certain things. Okay, then comes the Shudras. Now the Shudras also had two varieties. You find that, um, that the one particular section was was there so that they could be exploited, their, their labor could be made use of. So you find that they were asked to do unpaid work for the higher three classes. They were the, they were the agriculturists, they were the laborers, they did not have any land. And the second, within the Shudras, there was another way which handled the dead. We will, we will read about them in the third chapter when we are dealing with the Mahabharata and when we try to understand the society of the time period. Now, if you see, if you see, um, if you see the uh, society, the, uh, the economy and uh, the polity, you find that there are changes which are happening due to the economy of the time period. Let us now see the religion. Now, Rig Vedic, if you remember that they were semi-nomadic, the people moved from place to place, so there were no pakka houses. Hence, they were afraid of nature. 
So you find the trinity of gods which come at this time is what? Indra, Agni and Varun. So Indra, god of rain, Agni, god of fire, Varun, god of wind. So these are the gods which were, pre which were preyed on. Why? Because they were afraid of massive rains because they were moving from one place to the other and they had to, they had to um, save themselves from wind, rain and fire. So these were the gods of the time. In the later Vedic period, you find that uh, there is settled life, there are pakka houses. The trinity of gods now changed to Brahma, Vishnu, Shiv, which has gone on till now. So the Brahma is the creator, Vishnu the preserver, Shiv the destroyer. Now at this time, you find that the sacrifices became important. And I'm talking about the 600 BC and 600 BC mm -hmm. onwards is a time period which is a period of study. So you find that the sacrifices become important and the only question which come of this period is the two sacrifices which were there during this time. So one was Rajsuya, second is Ashwamedh, please write it down. And write it down the question also that what were the two sacrifices uh, which uh, were there. So Rajsuya sacrifice was uh, to gain supreme power by the king. And the Ashwamedh, that was the horse, uh, the horse. Now what happened in this, that the state horse was, um, was uh, decorated and it was left free. And the army of that particular um, tribe followed the horse. So it was said that wherever the horse is traveling, uh, that area automatically came under the, under the rule of the tribal king. And if there was, if there was um, uh, a ruler who, who caught the horse, they had to fight with the army which was accompanying the horse. Now, if you remember in Ramayan, uh, when, uh, when Lord Ram does the Ashwamedh the Yagya, you find that uh, the, the horse, the state horse, was stopped by his um, children, Love and Kush, where, uh, where they, were, um, they were staying in the forest with their mother Sita. And you find that once they stopped, then the, they had to fight a war with the, with the army of Ram and they defeated. So that's the connotation. Now let us come to this. Now if you see, if you see this is what is happening, you find that um, through the medium of the fire, the king connected with heaven. So it was said that whatever offerings, whatever offerings you put at this time goes directly to heaven. And that is why the sacrifices came into power. Now, if you notice, I am showing you only fire and I'm not showing you sacrifices. Now, at this time, this is the time period when you find that the sacrifices start. And this is also the time period when the uh, agriculture is the most important, um, most important um, aspect. And uh, they could not, uh, they could not, uh, you know, give sacrifices to so much of cattle with because they were dependent on it because the bulls were required for um, agriculture and cows, of course, that did not happen. So when you come, uh, so you find that this is the time period when the people started looking for alternatives and they did not want to continue with the sacrifices tradition. And that is a time period when you see Mahavir and uh, Lord Buddha come and they talk about non-violence. They talk about stopping off uh, these rituals like uh, and sacrificing of animals. And a large number of people, they go towards that side because they don't want to sacrifice their cattle wealth. This is one of the important aspects of the rise of um, Jainism and Buddhism. We will study that in the fourth chapter. Let's come to the picture on the right and you will see the horse, how beautifully it has been decorated and the army which is coming from behind. So now that you have understood the background to the rise of tribes and each tribe having a Rajan, now they are living in a settled place and you find that these tribes, when they started increasing their area, because the population is increasing, they require more area to be under the under one tribe. This is what it came to Janpath. So you find that Janpats were formed. There were as many as 22 Janpats which came about. But 
6th century BC is the time period when you find that 16 Mahajanpads came to power. This I will cover in the next session. Go through this and just memorize the two yag which I have explained, Ratsuya and Ashwamedh yag. Till then, revise Harappa, revise and understand uh, the development of society, economy, religion and polity. And I will explain the rise of the Mahajanpads and what are the kind of Mahajanpads which were there. Thank you.